Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be solving a nice functional equation. I can pretty much say that I came up with this problem even though this problem probably appears somewhere else because it's so standard. I'll show you a method that could be used to solve these kinds of problems and we'll also talk about some general strategies for solving functional equations. At some point I'm planning to make a lecture video on functional equations, but I don't know when I'm going to be able to do it. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look. We have f of xy equals x times f of y plus y times f of x. The only restriction on x and y would be they have to be positive. Other than that, we're good. Okay, that's the only limitation that I'm going to place. So obviously, I can definitely try some numbers under these conditions, right? For example, x can be 1 and y can be 1 at the same time and this is going to give me f of 1 equals 1 times f of 1 plus 1 times f of 1 and this will give me f of 1 equals 2 f of 1 cancel out f of 1 1 equals 2 uh oh that's not good obviously that's a joke don't take it seriously because you don't solve equations like that you have to put the f1s on the same side if you subtract either way you're going to get f of 1 equals 0 that's what it means, right? I mean, if something equals two times the same thing, it can only happen with zero. Zero is so powerful, and yet they call it nothing. Okay, imagine multiplying one million by zero. Is it nothing? Anyways, so f of one is zero. Is that going to help us? Maybe, maybe. A lot of times it's helpful to know uh, what f of zero is or f of one is and, you know, things like that, or f of negative x if it's even or odd, or if it's uh, bijective, so on and so forth. There is a lot of things you can look at. We can't really cover those in a short video, but I'm like, hmm, f of 1 equals 0 kind of gives me a little bit of a clue, like f of x could be maybe something like log x or ln x, or maybe any log x, like any base, log x with base a, right? Okay. Looks good because in all cases, f of 1 will be 0. But we can't go backwards, guys. We can go this way. If f of x is equal to ln x, then you can say f of 1 is 0, but not vice versa. Unfortunately, that's what makes functional equations harder. But at the same time, funner. Okay, so suppose, and this is an assumption, f of x is equal to k ln x. Why did I use a constant? Because it doesn't matter, right? This basically represents all bases, by the way, even though I use ln because I like ln. Natural log. So f of xy is going to be k ln xy, which can be written as k ln x plus k ln y. If you use the properties of logs and distribute the k, you hopefully know that rule. And on the right hand side, I have x f of y plus y f of x. By the way, I'm just checking if this is going to satisfy my equation. Maybe you already know the answer, but wait. x times k ln y plus y times k ln x. And they're not equal, as you can see, right? I mean, x ln y, k ln y, k ln x, no way. These two are not going to be equal. For particular values of x and y, yes, maybe, but not in general. So, this means our function did not satisfy the equation. Uh-oh, that's not good. I'm sad. Uh, don't worry about it. This doesn't, set, this doesn't satisfy, but we're going to try something else maybe, right? For example, what, is, uh, what are some other things that you can do? Let's talk about some general strategies, strategies and then I'll present uh, my solution approach. Because the approach I'm saving for the end because it's a strategy that you can use in general for many equations as long as it's applicable, but it's a really nice strategy. Anyways, so we can sometimes set y equals x and that's going to give us something like f of x squared equals x f of x plus x f of x, which is 2x f of x. Again, I don't know if this is going to help. We don't know. Or you can set y equals 1 over x or you can set y equals negative x. And sometimes you can just change x and y. Make sense? So you can write it like this, f of y x. So you're going to replace x with y and y with x. But guess what? It's going to give you the exact same thing. So it's not going to help at all. So all of these ideas may not work and that's fine. Nothing may seem to be helping. That's totally fine. Now let's get to 
our strategy. So here's how it works. And by the way, these are not the only uh, substitutions you can make, obviously, and we're going to use it in a few days. I can't remember exactly, but another function equation that I'm going to be doing, use this type of strategy. You can sometimes replace x with y, but y with 0. Or you can replace x with x plus y and y with 0, or vice versa. There are so many substitutions you can make, there is no limit on those, and, you know, Unless you made up the problem yourself, uh, it may be very hard to find in some cases. Anyways, so far nothing seems to be helping, right? Let's go ahead and use our strategy. So our strategy is the following. f of x, y equals x, f of y plus y, f of x. So, in this equation, I first of all notice that I have an x, y on the left. So that makes me think of a couple different things. First of all, we got f of 1 equals 0. We know that. So uh, ln x did not work. But that doesn't mean our function is not going to have any ln x in it. You understand what I'm talking about? It might have a factor of ln x. So it could be something like e to the power x ln x, x squared ln x, x ln x, or ln x over x, right? I mean, we specify x to be positive and y to be positive. So having x at the bottom would not cause a problem. And in this case, this would still be 0 at 1. This would be 0, this would be 0, this would be 0. So all of these would work. But you can't just try all possible combinations or permutations. We kind of have to be more smarter. I mean, more smarter? Smarter than that. Another thing that I notice here is that I have a product that also kind of verifies the uh, logarithmic structure, but that's not good enough. We do need something else. And notice that x is multiplied by f of y and y with f of x. It's not the other way around, and trust me, you don't want that. This is not as good as what we have. This is going to be obviously more problematic. I don't know if you can think of a really nice problem that uses this structure. Uh, you could. Anyways, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take my equation, erase all the stuff, and get to work, real work. I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by x, y. And you might be asking, like, why are you doing this? Where on earth does this come from? How, one, uh, how someone is going to come up with that? I know all these objections. That's okay. I do it because I have an x, y on the left inside the parentheses, and not only that, but things are going to cancel out like crazy. And I'm going to end up with something super duper beautiful. I just find this awesome. I don't know what you think. Please let me know. But look at this. What do you see? If you see that this function is kind of repeating here and here in different ways, then you can use substitution. Call this g of x. This is going to become g of y. This is going to become g of x, y. And guess what you're going to have? g of xy equals g of x plus g of y, which is one of Cauchy's functional equations. Yay! And you should know that g of x is satisfied by k ln x. This is where the ln x comes in. But g of x is equal to f of x over x. So by cross multiplication, you'll get your answer. f of x is going to be k x ln x. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.